Good morning. I have two questions today. First time I met you was in October, and I asked you a question about relationships. I said, I want a relationship, and you said, let it go. And then you said, wake up in the morning and stay with that 17 seconds and feel great and everything. And I did that, and so many things changed and had a lot of fun and stuff like that. And I guess my question today is that I go through my day, and let's say a song comes on the radio, and I don't feel bad about it, but it makes me think about having a relationship, and then I go with it without noticing that I'm going with it. And a lot of momentum in a lot of those songs. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> a lot of momentum in a lot of those songs. So I guess Esther plays a game where she gets into her car several times a day and backs out of the garage and XM radio is always on and whatever songs playing when she backs out, she thinks it has significant meaning to her because it's divine timing after all. She's just not getting in the car because it's time to get in the car. She's waiting for the impulse and going. Sometimes she leaves a half an hour early because the feeling comes to her. Just a little aside here, because we want to talk about this divine timing okay. because it's part of what's coming next. So <laughs> we're really good about timing because we have overview. <laughs> As many of you know, Jerry made his transition a few years ago. And so Esther has this wonderful ongoing relationship and they play this game where there's a light in the house that if there's something significant that Esther is thinking about or wondering about, the light will blink and Esther knows that Jerry's on the case and then she has a conversation with him and it's a light that shines down on a wall and she can see it from nearly every place in the house. The house is U-shaped so she can see it from her office, she can see it from her living room, she can see it in the bedroom which is where it is. And so recently that light stopped blinking so much, hadn't blinked for quite a while. And she has a beautiful kitchen with a stainless steel hood over her stove and the light on that hood has never worked which doesn't matter because there are plenty other lights in the kitchen and she just hasn't taken the time to do anything about it. And so as she went to bed one night, she said, all right, Jerry, that light isn't blinking. And I just want you to know, I really like the light thing. I really like it. So if it's all the same to you. I really like the light thing. <laughs> and when she got up in the morning, the light over the kitchen stove was on, was on. And she couldn't turn it off. <laughs> the button just is inoperative. So she wants to think that that's Jerry who's turned that light on just for fun because it's just like him to not do it the way she wants him to do it, but to do it sort of the kind of way she wants him to do it, but to really do it the way he wants to do it. It was so Jerry. So Esther asks Fidel, the groundsman, to come and see what's up with that switch because it doesn't seem right that she can't turn the light off when she leaves the house her house is a fancy house she pushes a button and all the lights go off at once except that that light won't go off <laughs> so fidel comes over and he dismantles it and takes it all apart and makes the light go off and esther says thank you very much and now that light isn't on for a little while and then a few days later esther gets up and she notices the light is on again and again, she cannot turn it off. So now she's on her way somewhere. She gets in her car. She pushes the button in the garage before she gets in the car that turns all the lights out, except that one. And she's laughing to herself, except that one. And when she gets in the car, the song on the radio, a country Western song is singing, try to leave a light on for me, will you? <laughs> Those are the words. Those are the words. Now, so many people just want to call these things coincidence. We want you to understand that there is divine timing going on in your experience all day, every day. You just got to create the atmosphere. That's what Esther is saying to her friend the other day. Our work singularly, it's not our work to find the path. It's not your work to find the relationship. It's not your work to figure it out. It's not your work to fill in the grid. It's your work, your singular work to prepare a vibrational atmosphere around yourself so that you are the realizer of the impulses that will put you on the path not just because the path will lead you to where you want to go but because the path is so delicious as it is unfolding in other words what could be more delicious than to feel that 
hands on all day long, all day long, source energy, aware of you knowing who you are and where you are and who you really are and what you really want and knowing the precise path to get you from where you are to where you want to be at all times. All you gotta do is chill and follow the impulses you say. And those messages come to you in endless ways through songs. Esther will be sitting and writing something and a hummingbird will come and almost touch her on the nose as if to say, that's the point we were hoping you'd get. <laughs> Pay attention to what's going on around. Source is using every conceivable possible messenger to confirm and accentuate things that are important to you. You just gotta be aware, you see. And you have to accept, you have to accept that you just have to be one of those weird people. <laughs> so just follow the signs. <laughs> follow the signs. Yes. But just before that, prepare yourself to be aware of the signs. That really is the work. You got, you can't be mad and follow the sign to where we want to be. It's that unconditional thing. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, it's coming. Just find some feeling, try to find some touchstone like Esther did with the video, something that you remember some moment in time, some moment when you felt unconditional and by unconditional, we mean singular. We mean unconditional. We mean nothing necessary, no condition necessary to produce the feeling. It's just the feeling. It's what meditation will do for you. Meditation puts you in a place of unconditional love. If you can get your mind clear, that's what happens. You just get into that vibration where there's no condition that is contradicting your vibration. And then you're in that place of unconditional love. But you got to play with it just a little bit and don't get freaky about it and don't worry about it. Just try it a little bit and watch the results and try it a little bit and watch the results until before very long, you will begin feeling yourself in this divine timing. Yesterday, as Esther was traveling here, when she got to the baggage carousel, the light began blinking in the moment that they walked to it instead of the usual 20 minutes or so wait. And the driver who had come to pick them up said, perfect timing. And Esther thought that's about the fourth time today. Somebody has actually said the words perfect timing. She was on the airplane. There was a man sleeping next to her. She really wanted to use the bathroom, but she didn't want to bother him. So she sat there and she thought, and then he woke up after her second loud sneeze. <laughs> and so she said, do you mind if I scoot out to use the restroom? And he said, no, no, no. So she goes and uses the bathroom. When she comes back, she slips into her seat. And as soon as she sat down, the flight attendant brought their lunch. And he said, perfect timing. And Esther thought, is the whole world in on this? Is the whole world in on this? Does everybody know that perfect timing is the way that I am now living? Does everybody know it? Seems so, you see. Perfect timing. So do you understand that creation, co-creation, oh, relationships. Do you understand that that's about rendezvousing, rendezvousing with the other? So let's say you have a meeting place. And do you really want to get there before the other one gets there? And they get there and they're not there and you're walking around starting to feel impatient. <laughs> it's not divine timing. That's off. So you don't want to get there before they're there. You want to get there to meet them. Don't you? And don't you trust that the source within you knows who you are and what you want and who they are and what they want. If you can just accept that it's for sure, it's for sure. It's for sure. It's not if it's really not so much even about when it's for sure. It's for sure. It's for sure. It's for sure. You just got to chill and know that. And when you rendezvous, you'll know it. You'll know it. You can't miss it. You'll know it. That was my question. Actually, you'll know it. You'll know it. And the best part is not only will you know it, they'll know it. Okay. You say, yeah. <laughs> What good is divine timing? If the wrong person shows up, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. 
It'll be divine timing, and you'll know it. You will both know it. No game playing. No, 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 I don't know. I'm not so sure. I got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me your resume. I'll check you out. Not any of that. You'll know it. You'll know it. Really good.